we have this time to create a function that displays a string of characters on the standard output. And here we have the prototype. As you can see, a function that doesn't return any value and takes as an input a string, namely char star. I recall to you that in C, we don't have strings. So we have char stars, namely a pointer to a char. For this specific exercise, we can use the function write. That I recall to you is a system call that allows you to flush in the standard output of various characters. Maybe you can have a check my previous video where I explain what this function is all about, okay? All right, we are ready to go into our program. Here is the old program. As you can see, it is very short and it is very simple. Let's start as usual from the main function. Here I declare a char star, namely a string in C. To my string, I assign the value hi exclamation point. Here, by default, the compiler is going to append a zero, a char zero. This zero is a sentinel value that allows us to understand exactly when the string is going to end. So I don't have manually to write something like this, slash x slash zero, because it will be done automatically by the compiler. Okay, so here I have my string and then I call my function put string, giving as an input the string itself. That I recall to you, it is just an address, namely the address of the first char, the first h. Here we have the function put string in all its glory. Very, very short, very, very concise, and now we're gonna understand how it is implemented. We have a while loop. The entry condition of this while loop is this one, namely at string. What is this? at string well i say at the address string so the char which is pointed by the address str if the char which is in this position is different from zero namely the sentinel zero this value here the one i was writing before i can write in this way but also i can write a zero because underneath the hood they are the same you remember from the ascii code the backslash zero is this null character and indeed has the value zero. So if I write zero or backslash zero, it is the same beast. Let's be pedagogically correct and write the, the char itself and not the number. If I read again this expression, the char at position str is different from this char zero, namely the sentinel. If this condition is true, what do I do? Well, I just write to the standard output uh, the char. So I say, please write in the standard output. This is the buffer, namely an address. A string is an address. So I can directly plug in str in this position. And then I just say, please one byte from the address pointed by str. Then I do a pointer arithmetic operation here, which is str plus plus. So I'm gonna increment the pointer by one, okay? Second iteration, at str. This time str is str plus one. So you see what I am doing. I'm just moving in the string, char by char. Thanks to this pointer arithmetic, a pointer is just a variable that I can change. It is essentially like an integer number that I can increase or decrease. Of course, for this operation, we are in the arena of pointer arithmetic. So the value increased is proportional to the object pointed. In this case, we point a char, so the increase is gonna be by one. So every time I move, I move, Every time I flush in the standard output one byte pointed by the address that every time increases, when the condition is gonna stop? Well, when the value pointed by str is equal to zero, namely the, the sentinel value. When this is true, the block is now accessed and the function ends, okay? I think it's pretty, pretty simple, this exercise. You have to understand the pointers here. You have to understand the pointer arithmetic. You have to understand the concept of buffer. And basically that's it. I think it is pretty easy if something just write in the comment because I don't know which which can be difficult by this exercise. If you understand pointers, pointer arithmetic, and uh, how the write function works, it is plain vanilla easy for you. Okay, let's compile the code as usual. Boom, and then we run. As you can see, I have my string perfectly flushed in the standard output. Perfect. Now let's see some optimizations of this code. You see how verbose I am here. I write many lines, like five lines, which is not cool. I want to write less lines. And indeed there is a method to perform this. Let's do it together. I comment this piece of code and here we are. 
code is commented and we remain with these two lines. It is more compact, more concise, and it is what you will find in the real world. When you're, you're gonna check on a daily basis Stack Overflow, this is the code you will meet, not this code here, or so verbose, or so pedagogical if you want. Here I say, while at string, at str. So here I do logic with the value of the char themselves. Because when I say at str, I'm pointing to a char, right? This char has a value that should represent a, a char, but it is an integer value if you want. A char is at the end of the day, an integer of one byte. You perfectly know that the value for truth is something which is different from zero. Every value which is different from zero is equal to the value for truth. So when I point the char, and indeed there is a char, this is not the sentinel value zero, I'm saying, okay, this is true. I don't need to write here something like that, different from zero. Uh, this is gonna be a piece of code useless because this control is already performed by the value of the char itself. I explained this concept in the previous video, so I think you already know. Let's move on. So I can really delete this part and simply say, while at str, while at string, you have the logic of the while loop embedded in this at str. Then I say, okay, if this is the case, just write in my standard output the char itself, which is different from zero. So here, what is interesting? First of all, we have this strange std out file no. What is that? Then I make pointer arithmetic directly inside the write function. And this is a postfix increment, right? And then I just deleted the curly braces. So for the curly braces, when I have only one line, I can delete them. They are not mandatory. Only when I have more than one line. So two lines less. Then this uh, symbol, what is that? Here you are familiar with the concept of standard output being one, right? This is what you know. I want to show you why this is a thing and why it works. You see, in our program, we had to include this file, unistd.h, to use the write function. Let's watch together what is inside this file. Here, as you can see, I use this h flag. This allows me to see for every program all the other files that I've included. So, enter. You see, I have all the files which are included thanks to my Unix standard file, which is, of course, the one at the top of this list. Then, in a recurrent way, all the other files are added. We have an include of all these files inside the uni standard file. Now, I just copy the path toward this file. And then I say, okay, cd, go in that directory. Boom. So we are now inside the directory containing the Unix uni std file. Now I make an ls. And you can see that here I have all my other files, right? All the other files that I can use in my program. Here I have, for example, the time header file, the float header file, the very useful stdo header file, so the file containing the function for standard input output. And of course, here we are, the file unistd.h, okay? So now let's watch what is inside the file unistd with this command, cat unistd.h. Cat is a command that allows you to flush in the standard out with the content of a file. Boom. Here we have all the fancy stuff which is inside the file unistd. You don't have to understand what is going on, but I want to show you something very specific for our program. You see here at the very top, we have these defines. You see? Define is a command that simply states, please, from now on, this symbol, is equal to this value. This symbol is equal to this value, and so forth. So you say, please, um, standard out file no from now on is equal to one. So every time I find in my file these series of charts, please change to one. It is a simple text substitution, so nothing really magical here. When I find this specific pattern, make a change, make a swap. So let's go back to the code. You just make cd and the simple ipen. So you can return uh, to the previous page. The, the ipen is just a way to make a toggle between two directories from the one from the one you were before and the one you are now. Okay, so this is a really handy toggle effect. Now I open again the, the program of before and now you very well understand why this constant becomes a one. 
before the program runs. Let's check if it works accordingly. Okay, we compile, we compile as usual, and then we run. As you can see, it works perfectly. So here, underneath the include Unix standard, I say define pineapple pen one. Okay, here with this line, I'm gonna define the value one with the symbol pineapple pen. All right. So this time I'm gonna do a change. You know, already understood what is going. Pineapple pen. What do you think is gonna work this time? Compile and run. It works. <laughs> so you understood perfectly what is going on. Uh, here I can write again my one. Perfect. Here I make an increment. As you know, I can increase my pointer, as I said before. So when I call the write function, I have the value of string not incremented. When the function has been called, I have a, an increment of the, the value of this address because it is a postfix increment, okay? And here, as usual, I use a one. So one byte from this buffer, from this address. And that's it, two lines. All right, now I want to show you a different approach to solve this problem. And this is a recursive approach. So the, 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 the nightmare, the spooky recursion, which nobody understands. So by now, I want to explain you recursion. I promise you I will make a series of videos in which you will understand this concept in the marrow of your bones, because nobody really is able to, under to understand this concept through videos. At least this was my experience. Knowing the problem, knowing how difficult it is to understand through videos, the recursion, maybe I can do something that fits your interests. Now I'm gonna to make a so-called Tail recursion. Not going into the details, but in a very shallow fashion, explain to you how it works. As usual, I have my main function, and then I call the function put string recursive. This time I say, okay, write what is pointed by a str in the standard output. Very easy. Then I say, if at str, so in the usual implicit logic operation, so if at str is not the sentinel value zero, what do you do? You call again the function with the argument value str plus one, so the address plus one. This is the increment of the address. Okay, what is going to happen then? Well, I have the function that is called again. This time the address here is str plus one, and then I do the same. I just write in the standard output the byte pointed by str, and then the same logic applies. What is the end? Well, the end is going to be when str is going to be zero because I never enter this block of code. If the value pointed by str is zero, this condition is false, and then I simply skip this part and the function ends. Okay, so it is like an iteration done through recursion. It's called a tail recursion. As you can see, the recursive code is at the bottom of the function. Now, I don't want you to spend too much time now in this concept because. If you understand, you understand, and that's easy for you. If you don't, don't worry. Again, there is a chapter, I think, chapter five in the Ficin, uh, in which uh, we have a lot of exercise with recursion, and you will understand perfectly what is going on. Let's try it out. Okay, compile, and again, run. As you can see, it works perfectly. Now I want to show you one last thing, which I think it's kind of cool. When I put the write at the bottom, what is going to happen, in your opinion? Let's compile and run. You see, my high gets reversed. This is the magic of recursion. You have to understand really what is going on, understand why this uh, string is reversed. Again, I will explain you later. Don't worry by now. It's just you need some time to digest this concept of recursion, and uh, this is not the moment, I guess. Okay. Well, this is it for this exercise. See you on the next one. Bye.